Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Silver Track Extra, where we give you tools, tips, and tricks to improve your guard management, retain more customers, win more contracts, and gain the upper hand against your competitors. Here are your hosts, Chris Anderson and Johnny Page. What's up, Silver Track Nation? Johnny Page and Chris Anderson on episode number 79 of the Silver Track Extra, where we're going to talk about actually, this is part five of a six part series on managing your supervisors. Today, we're going to talk about a few difficult workplace personalities and how to deal with people. Really, Chris, that's what we're in. We're in the people business, right? If you're in the security industry, you know your number one resource and your number one headache comes down to the people that we manage. So a lot of times this this comes down to really managing different personalities, getting people to work together that may not, under any other circumstance, normally be spending time together or working shoulder to shoulder, right, Chris? So I'm sure you you managed a few personalities in your day. Yeah, that's why I get out of the business. I hate people. I <laughs> I hate people. Uh, I, you know, I used to like people before I got in the guard business, but since I got in the guard business, I, I hate people now. So, Oh, you can't let it ruin you? Come no, on. I, I, I'm just kidding when I say that. But I, you know what? Our listeners out there, they're probably agreeing with me right now. They're going, yeah, you're right. The manager, everybody's a pain in the butt. Guards aren't doing their work. So it's a tough business. But yeah, unfortunately, you're right, John. It's, a big, uh, it's all about you know people's personalities and and that's a big part of the business, unfortunately. Yeah, I actually know you to be quite the opposite. You're someone who you constantly give people the benefit of the doubt, and you're always willing to to go the extra mile to help someone. So uh, I know that that certainly served you well in some regards, and then other times, you know, unfortunately, it's easy to get taken advantage of. But you have a huge heart. You definitely take care of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm joking when I say that, and you know, because when I was a police officer, you know, you get yourself killed if you're not a people person, right? Yeah. You got yeah, you totally. got to you got to be able to work with people. So, I'm all joking aside, and I think people out there that are listening to this know that I'm joking around a little. <laughs> yeah, so so today will be sort of a fun format. Uh, I'm sure that as we roll through these different personality types and uh, or I guess we're going to call these stereotypes and and we're, we're just going to talk about a few ways to to address the communication barriers that come with working with, for example, our first personality type would be the gossip, right? We all know who the gossip is in certain businesses. Um, and and they can present their f- certain problems, right? If you have a supervisor, which is what we're specifically talking about here, this can be someone who re- it's really easy to sidetrack um, your operation when they're constantly out there sharing the good, bad, and ugly uh, with their favorite guard or with any guard for that matter. So, Chris, there's definitely a couple ways that we can address someone who it's pretty easy to identify who the gossip is. Most likely, it's a person who's always got the inside scoop, the dig. They're the one who is uh, constantly spreading the news within the company. How do we make sure that we're effectively communicating with someone who has this tendency? Well, this 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 gossip concept, the way I look at it, there's two different ways of gossiping. There is a person that just loves to talk, right, and talk and have their opinion about everybody in the office, for an example. And then you have that guy that's had a bad experience who loves to gossip, right? And, and that's my that's a cancer cell to me. You know, somebody that's just never happy, right? And just spreading not only uh, yeah. you know, business gossips, but stuff that's can be very damaged to the organization. You know, when yeah. you get that going, imagine that, having that kind of personality type there can c- cause you all kinds of issues. So number one is what is the gossip about and why is he gossiping? So. Yeah. What you have to think about was specifically as an owner with this type of, with a supervisor or a manager who has this tendency is you've really got to make sure you don't endorse that behavior. So if you buy in, of course, sometimes it's nice to get the, you know, to have a pulse on what's happening if you're not always out in the field, you're not always around the operation. Of course, people will tend to act differently when the owner or the operations manager is there versus maybe a, a supervisor or some of their buddies. But if you endorse and you kind of uh, play into that type of behavior, the gossipy conversations, you can really damage your operation and the trust that some of your employees have in you, especially if it's a two-way street. So you definitely don't want to engage in that um, and co- sort of create that type of culture. I think it's re- can be really damaging to your business. No, you create some horrible habits within your organization if you can't get that stopped. 
you know, and that people use it as a form of entertainment too. So the bad part about it is that, you know, it's hard to sometimes get that stopped. Sometimes you have to eliminate quite a few people. Think about it. You got one person that gets the other person going and you got three or four people in there that really are creating some conflict in the organization. How do you, how do you eliminate it? You yeah. got to cut, you got to cut it out. You know? Totally. So. How about this one? I know for a fact every single owner out there has one of these working for them. <laughs> it is the blamer. It's yeah. never my fault, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The guy's only worked for 15 other different companies before he came to you. It's always <laughs> yeah. the blamer, right? Or you look on their LinkedIn profile. They've been there for six months at a time, right? Every yeah. six months, you know? Yeah. So a couple of things that we can do to help improve communication with a blamer, we can try redirecting their attention away from the blame and towards the facts that are are written on the wall, right? There's a lot of times if we're not using subjective information, it's really hard to blame this on someone else, which this goes back to our previous episode on our two previous episodes on establishing a process and making sure that there are measurable tasks because then it's when there's some key performance indicators involved, it's very difficult to blame someone else when you've established ahead of time what their responsibility is um, and where their, uh, I guess that their, their job description or their scope of service really lies. Like whose, whose role stops where, if that makes sense, Chris. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, sure does. So, any anything else uh, of a way to deal with a blame? I'm sure you had experience with some with guys, some of these guys who can never see their own role. I think a lot of this goes back to like self awareness too. If you can see how your actions affect the big picture, a lot of times we don't have an issue with someone who's blaming. But how do, are there any tips you have on how we can help someone become more aware? of the role that they play? Because I think that's really the root of someone who is constantly blaming or, or failing to take responsibility. Yeah, well, number one, I learned this. You, you have to be a pretty good communicator yourself in order to eliminate the problem or recognize you even have one, right? Because, it, you know, it, it, you, you have to, it may be, because it, you know, it's very difficult to effectively communicate to somebody, you know, what they're doing before you. So before you even get into that conversation with them, you better get, a, you better have, you better be a good communicator, period, Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to cause a problem with them and then everybody else down the line. So, well, and you, you've got to take ownership for your. You can't be the blamer, basically. Yeah. Well, like you got to. Well, here's an example. How about this? The guy, the people. What are they gossiping about? Is it true? Now it's gossip, but is it true? Are you late on payroll all the time? Right? Do you treat your employees poor? Right? Yeah. Do you not take care of their uniforms? I mean, whatever the you got to take a look at the actual conversation itself. What is the gossip really about? Is it does it have any value to it, or is it just somebody that's just plain bored, just just picking out stuff in the air just to you know just to create conversation or problems? Guards get bored at night. You no, know? see, so they find them back and forth talking and communicating on the phone. It's almost like a bunch of women from that. Uh, a housewife program, right? Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves drama. It's a yeah. shame, but people do. Which you know? is a great segue into the, the third personality type here, which is the drama queen. Someone who can easily fly off the handle or doesn't handle criticism very well or makes things very emotional. Um, so uh, this can obviously be an issue. You can, you know, that you have one of these personalities working for you. If you find yourself hesitating to uh, provide feedback or uh, or criticism, and so some of the ways that we can affect or more effectively communicate is to try to. Uh, ease into things. You're not going to sugarcoat like criticism, but making sure that you're e- equally criticizing some of the things that they need, constructive criticism on things they need to improve on, but also that you're very vocal in the in the praise. That, that, so when they do a good job, you're identifying that and bring sh- shining light on that as well. I think that's super important. Um, and then just helping them understand, like when when something really emotional happens, like I know a lot of times. In the security industry, we aren't always planning for what happens during the day, right? Like, so something can happen off the handle. And if you have someone who has a difficult time remaining calm um, and it gets real emotional, like so high stress situations tend to, uh, they respond a little bit more negatively than others, then maybe we need to look at ways that we can help move them to a different position where they can be more planned or just sort of understanding their personality type, the things they can handle and the things they can't, right? 
Yeah, and you've heard too. You know, a lot of these people, people are drawn to them, right? Some of them are very funny, right? They, you know, these it's almost like they're bipolar. A lot of these people, right? They're they're in a good mood one minute, and they're in a bad mood the next, and when they're in a bad mood, it's horrible, right? Yeah, because that's all they want to do is gossip. So they've attracted a lot of attention. People like those. Um, sometimes they're people that are entertaining and energetic. So it's it's hard, you know, because they see them one way, and then all of a sudden the people turn and start to gossip. It causes it causes problems. So it's like you said, you got to be able to. You know, got to be able to, to trap it, get it in. Well, Silver Track Nation, let's take a break and hear from our sponsors over at Paperless Proposal. Paperless Proposal software was developed to make creating professional business proposals a quick, easy, and enjoyable experience. With Paperless Proposal, you and your team will never again have to go through the frustrating and time-consuming process of creating your business proposals using outdated and time-consuming tools like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint. With Paperless Proposal, you and your team will look forward to creating business proposals. Visit paperlessproposal.com slash silvertrack to take advantage of a special offer just for our listeners. Now, let's get back to our featured conversation. You know, the next one here, it has several pros and several cons. I think the control freak is one that we've all encountered before. I think there's several pros because this person can be very hands-on. It's nice to have a a supervisor who is very hands-on. A lot of times these are people who make their way into management roles because they enjoy having an input on how things happen. They enjoy having an input on the procedures that are put in place. There's also a couple downsides to this, right? Especially if they're in a middle management position and they don't quite understand where their boundaries are or what their job description really entails. Um, There can be some issues here. So I think couple of strategies for dealing with a control freak is definitely like we mentioned before having very clear expectations on what their responsibilities are will really help them understand where they can where their boundaries are what's their arena uh, and how can they move within that arena without bumping into other supervisors or account managers operations managers or even you as the owner yeah control freaks are in in when I had my business they they're not good managers. Okay, it's it, it, this is a team effort. So I don't, I did not particularly like control freaks just for that because they're, they're very hard. They're very competitive. They're all about themselves, right? It's either whether they can get they can climb the ladder to make more money or they want to be the one to, to to have the light all the time. And you know this business it requires a team. It really does. And so I'd be very careful putting those kind of people in a management position. You know? Yeah, I think it, if it can be controlled, if they understand that about themselves, it can be a lot more constructive than if they are not aware of that issue. Right? So like someone who who has who enjoys taking ownership like you you absolutely want this is what we go back to the very first episode in the series is having people that will help take ownership over their job right over what you're expecting them to do so that's good but if it is overbearing or overboard it can definitely be a distraction on the company and difficult to manage yeah you can and you can create a control freak right if you get somebody in your organization the manager saying i want you to do this and you need to make sure you do this and make sure they do that you almost put them in that position to become a control freak because they're so worried about their own job right and doing that and they're so used to doing it themselves they actually become a control freak so it's not as you know they weren't born that way right when they came in your organization so you got to be very careful of throwing all that responsibility into one person because you you literally can does that make sense almost yeah. turn them into one absolutely so. absolutely so the next one here and i don't know i'm i know we've seen these from time to time how about the passive aggressive type the ones who you're never going to know they're not very confrontational uh to your face but there's always some cool calm and collected ways that they're uh that they're expressing their negative feelings or uh things that they're not so happy about where you may not always know it, it's not blatant right it's very passive um but these are it's an inter- interesting person to have in the workplace yeah. <laughs> certainly a, f- a few things that we need to do i've had i've had so many victims man everybody's a victim you know they, you haven't heard from them. You, you, you leave them out of one thing right and all of a sudden you can't reach them on the telephone they're not calling you back or they just terminate, right? No conversation, just leave. You know, this is this is a great one in the industry. A lot of victims in this business. You know, this is funny. 
So I think the last one that we will cover here, of course, there's plenty more that we could talk about. I, I think the one that we probably encounter quite often is really good for the security industry could be uh, the paranoid one, or at least some that operate with a, a small level of paranoia. If we can channel that in the right direction and that they're always uh, hyper aware of what's going on in their uh, area, especially if they're out on post or if they're, uh, you know, in a patrol car doing post inspections, this can be a good one. Obviously, there's an overboard type and there's probably a level of balance to all of the ones that we discussed today. But Chris, I'm sure you had a few uh, paranoias that were working for you. Yeah, but in fact, quite a few paranoias, you know, but it can be good and it can be bad because in the the industry itself, a lot of guys, you know, like for an example, on patrols, right? A lot of guys can't cover their ground, right? They can't get to to all the patrol accounts. So a lot of guys pencil whip it, right? They used to lie and say, well, we actually did this hit when they didn't do that hit. And that caused a lot of guys in this particular position to, uh, it was very hard for them, right? Because they truly did want to do a good job. But on the other hand, it was stressful for them because, you know, the industry is what it is. You get stuck at some locations, but you don't want to lose a contract either, you know? So Yeah, totally. So Chris, as we wrap up here, if you can help us understand we have all these different personality types and a lot of times it's not just the individual it's how they work with one another so how did you make sure when you have this management team that we're talking about building a core around you as an owner how do we make sure a lot of times that we've we've got people who can work well with one another were there certain things that you did maybe like um, outside of the business of the day to day business, where there were some team building exercises, or not not like the cliche cheesy type stuff, but just things where you would help build some camaraderie between the two, because them the ability to work together is really really important if we're ever going to go where we want our businesses to go as security owners. Yeah, you know, John, sit down and have a a cup of coffee with them. Sit down and invite them in when they come into your office one day and just have a cup of coffee with them. Go take them to lunch. Even better, put a uniform on and go ride with the guy. You'll learn everything about him, his family, what he was raised. You know, he'll, they'll, they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you about they, it'll, it'll tell you uh, about them as an individual. And that's what I did. I went out and learned about them. What what made them tick? What was their interest? Hey, you're going to be, I, I wouldn't know whether they're going to be a long-term employee or a short-term employee. Maybe you want to be a law enforcement officer. This is just a stepping stone, right? So there's a lot of things I didn't have to buy. So in other words, if I was out riding with him and he's telling me, yeah, I love this career. You know, I figured about another six months, I just applied for the sheriff's department looking to be a police officer. You know, it's been fun and uh, really appreciate the job. The guy's, you know, I got to commend him for that, right? He's going to go advance himself, but it's not somebody I'm just going to throw into a management position only to lose them six months from now, right? Absolutely. Too. So I'm just saying, so get to know your people and you can solve a lot of these problems and you can figure out their, their personalities and then figure where they work best at. Well, what do you like working? Nights and mornings? Do you like the multi-housing industry? you like the commercial? Is he more of a people person? Is he more of a manager? Is he more organized? You know, if they get in a car, for an example, the guy's got his posse box completely organized and he's by the book, he's probably going to be a good teacher and a good manager. Totally. Right? You know, yeah. For an example. So it's learning your people. And you can do that simply just by getting to know them. And then I think, you know, a big part, we're heading into the holidays here. How difficult is it just to have a, a company lunch where you got every, everyone comes in and you have lunch on a Friday? Or same thing, maybe you have a company party where you just – some guys that are coming in, people who work together on a day-to-day -day basis, have some extracurricular stuff where you can find some common ground outside of the day-to-day. -day. It helps kind of pump in some grace for one another when, you're, when, when sometimes the, you know, the, the crap hits the fan. Yeah. yeah, I always I always tell that's good. That's a great one, John. I always tell people too when you can get yourself a, a budget, you know, and just call it your little company, uh, your company budget for your yearly parties or whatever you're going to have each year. Put things aside for the best employee, right? Uh, attendance or whatever it may be, sales. But it's nothing better for that particular time to get a group of people together to where they have their families and invite their families. Invite their, let them to bring their, their yeah. husband, wives, whatever, to come. And it's nothing better to have a nice dinner, a nice location where everybody can dress up and meet and share and talk and then do the award presentation. That goes, that goes really far, especially if they can expect that every year. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It gives people, you know, to come there and get a nice award in front of the, you know, all their peers. That's, that's, best, that's, the, that's the best thing you could do, but you got to be consistent. You know? Absolutely.
Well, Silver Track Nation, the list of personality types that we covered here, uh, and, and then a few more, are over at SilverTrackSoftware.com slash 79 for episode number 79. There are tons of resources. Every week we publish three more podcasts and blogs, and we're doing multiple resources a month. So there are ebooks, webinars, calculators, kits, and all of the above all for free there to help you improve your business, grow your company and reach your goals as an owner. So Chris, anything else to add before we wrap up? No, you, since you're talking about the eBooks, I want everybody to know you guys, these eBooks are, this, these aren't just put together in five or 10 minutes. These are put, put together over a length of time, over a lot of podcasts. I get guys all the time to say, hey, that eBook was fantastic. I can't believe you released that. And I said, well, that's what it's all about. So you guys don't lose out. Sign up and get in this thing so we you have access to these this information. It's very, really good information. So Absolutely. And we enjoy putting it together, too. Yeah. Well, until next time, my name is Johnny Page. And I'm Chris Anderson. And we will see you on episode number 80. 